Hello, thank you for joining me. So guess what? I am, you don't have to guess, guess what? I'm a big fan of the Library of Congress's Maps Twitter account. It's so inspiring, LOC Maps. Definitely give it a follow. If you're watching this video, you're gonna like this Twitter account. Uh, look at all these inspiring examples of maps that were made hundreds of years ago often. Um, I mean, look at these things. Um, here we are in our thoroughly modern age, but there are so many great ideas and styles and concepts that can be gleaned from the work of our forebearers. Thank you very much, History, and thank you, Library of Congress, for sharing all of this, scanning it, sharing it with us. It's so cool of you. Um, so today, I was, this morning, I was looking through and I saw this old map of Philadelphia. Pretty basic. Philadelphia map. Um, let's take a closer look. They always give you an option to go right to their site and just explore it in excruciating detail, which we'll do right now. And I was looking at this and I looked at the scale bar and I thought, what a charming, nice little scale bar. I, you know, I like to make things that look plausibly like they're actually old sometimes. Oh, hi. What's that? Oh, uh, no thanks. Uh -huh. Pardon the interruption. That was my lovely wife, Danielle. We all work from home now. I actually worked from home before the lockdown, so I was in actually a pretty enviable position, but I hope you're doing well. Okay, back to the map. I mean, what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, I like making maps that look kind of vintage and borrow that charming tactile aesthetic of the past with the imperfections in the printing. I mean, I don't know if this is like a lithographic pass. It looks imprecise enough that I, would, I think somebody went through this atlas and hand tinted all the pages. See how they, I mean, it's kind of a quick job, but boom, boom, boom. There's some hand tinting going on, I think, in this in this map. Thank you, hand tinter, whoever you are. Matthew Elbert Lauder, employee from the past. Okay, so let's let's try to recreate this scale bar in our thoroughly modern tools. So we're not etching copper plates and we're not hand tinting anything. We're pushing pixels around and having a lot of fun doing it. Let's see if we can replicate this sort of thing in ArcGIS Pro. Now, I have to admit, I don't do a ton of work with scale bars because a lot of the maps I make, I cheat. I just do really small scale maps. Small scale, you're holding the fish far away from you and his scales look small. Large scale, you hold the fish close to you and so the scales look big. Thank you, Cartonaut, for that amazing bit of mnemonic uh, black magic it helps me every time. It's how I it's how I remember large and small scale now. I always had a, a I always struggled with that. A lot of people do. I don't feel bad. I'm not embarrassed to admit that. Okay, so let's add a scale bar to this map of you know the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States and the Atlantic. Uh, charmingly hand drawn vector uh, boundaries by Dylan Moriarty, Moriarty Hand. So check out this layer and others at Project Line Work. It's pretty great, Google that later, but don't do it right now, watch this video now. Okay, so here I am in a layout in ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to insert a scale bar. Now I'm gonna, golly, I'm gonna pick a scale bar that looks kind of the closest thing, just so we're starting from a pretty close reference. I'll, I'll do this one. Um, and I'll just drag it over here and let's, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm going to have to tweak this. Yes. 500 miles. Cool. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it nice and close. And now let's look at the properties. So I'm going to right click, open the properties for this thing and I tell you, 
There are myriad ways that you can tweak and push and pull and style these scale bars. It's unknowable. No one can know the depths of the options. So let's start over here in the options tab. It's that little, little text bubble icon called options. Um, let's, let's run right on down, scale bar. Uh, fine, I think that's just the layer name. I don't care, visible, sure. Um, what map is it corresponding to? Well, the map that I've got in my layout by default, which is helpful. Map units is miles, just like our reference material. Thank you, mile. Um, the label text, so instead of miles, it's actually all caps scale, lowercase of, and then all caps miles. So let's replicate that here. Scale of miles. Okay, label position. By default, it's after the bar, but our reference has it sitting right on top center. So above center, boom, looks good. And let's let's take a look at our divisions. Um, these are like the major divisions, and then these are subdivisions. Let's see what happens when I just play with these. If I remove subdivisions, you know, we're getting closer to our reference. And divisions is four, but really this is a very basic scale bar, and I just want two divisions. What happens if it's one? Oh, okay, that, that's cool. Okay, two divisions. Um, it actually resized a bit, so let me just, I mean, I can't help it. I just have to do this kind of thing. I want it to be 500. Okay, um, forgive me. And <clears throat> yeah, this, that's how we're kind of playing with the structure. Let's look at some more options. Um, We'll go to the properties tab now. I mean, this little icon does give me a clue that, okay, now it's time to monkey around with these number labels and how the, the bar itself looks. Um, for the frequency of the numbers, um, divisions and first midpoint, I'm gonna say the ends. No, I don't want the ends because I need that middle label. Um, Single label? No, not good. Divisions? Okay. Good. Now, there's actually no option in here that lets me label null here and then just start right at that first division. I have to have zero. You know, that's cool, man. I get it. This is a, a flexible tool that has no idea what I'm trying to do. It's just trying to help me. So I got to live with the zero. I can live with that. I mean, Honestly, I don't know why there's not a zero in the scale anyway. Although it is kind of obvious that's zero, but whatever. I'm gonna live with this zero. Nothing but love for this form. Okay, number of decimal places. Well, in this case, I, mean, I don't ever wanna round my miles. Um, use fractional characters, what does that do? In this case, nothing, show thousand separators. Um, yes, if this were ever gonna like blow up and be like 5,000, I would want that comma. Or if you're a European, it would be a point. Okay, uh, pad with zeros, nah. Offset, three points. Well, before we get to offset, let's look at the position of them. Um, wait, oh yeah, the position is up top, above the bar. Mm -hmm. That sounds fine. Everything's above the bar. Okay, in our reference, the numbers are below the bar. Let's see if we have that as an option. Yes, that's an option. Okay, I mean immediately we're honing right in on our reference material in the structure. Now, um, how big do I want to make them? Well, it's, it's up to us. Uh, right now they, they're pretty similarly sized, but in our reference, the mile numbers are quite small. And uh, so let's, we've got it below the board, below the bar. Um, our offset is three. Here's, this is what offset means. How far away do you want to space it? Um, look at this, the symbol. 
Right now it's just the default Ariel. Ariel's a great default, but let's look at something that's a little bit more old fashioned y. And I've found that um, there's a cool uh, Bell MT. And I'll choose Italic Bell. And get an indication for what we're going to get here. Nice! You know, it's not spot on, but I mean, come on. Look at look at those flourishes in the in the um, glyphs. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. And I'm going to shrink this down to, I don't know, 10? Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we'll go back now. And I'm going to reduce my offset. Boy, in in the reference, they're just snugged right up. Can I go negative? No, I, I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna try things. Break the rules. Breaking the rules. Okay, didn't work. Zero's good. I can handle that. Now, marks. What is a mark? I think it's these lines here. You can't really see them because they're sitting flush with the whole bar. Uh, oh, you, you, <laughs> you also can't see them because no marks is selected. But let's choose marks at the end. Okay, yes. So now we have a glyph, or like a serif, at the beginning and ending, just like in our reference scale bar. I don't want them above the bar. I want them centered on the bar. Yes, cool, okay, now they're a little small. Our reference has them slightly larger, so let's push that up, okay. And I don't have any subdivisions, so I can ignore this. Now the bar itself, actually the bar itself is thicker than I want. So I'm gonna reduce this. Um, that looks, let's, let's, go with, let's go with four points. I like where this is headed. Okay, style is alternating. Um, by the way, here's what hollow looks like. Actually, I thought that would have had, I don't know. A lot A lot of what I do is just clicking and seeing what, what happens. I do want alternating, so I'm just gonna stick with that. But look, it's the opposite of what I actually want from my reference. I want this one to be hollow and this one to have the fill. And later on, I'll get into how to actually make it look all smudgy and hand tinted and red like that. But for now, I just wanna switch these around. How do I do that? Well. For symbol one, because this is alternating, I love all these features, it's, it's fantastic. I'm gonna choose no color, apply it, and I'll go back, and then for symbol two, I do want some color. Bring it back, hit apply, there you go. Okay, there. Now, I've got the right font here, but I mean, obviously scale of miles just isn't fitting in because that's aerial. So I'll go back to my options because, um, what was that title? Yeah, scale of miles. See this symbol here? I'm gonna dig into this now. And I'll also give it the bell, bell MT, where'd you go, where'd you go, italic. Let's just hit apply really quickly and see. Wow, well, yeah, I love it. Actually, a pretty, pretty good match. Pretty good match. You can get lost in monkeying around with lots of different fonts, <clears throat> even making your own. Heather Smith has made her own glorious font based on um, carved old woodblock map prints. Warren Davison has made a really lovely throwback font from Atlases in the 1800s and, and such. Um, Sarah Bell has made her own font, which is more of a, a modernist take from 1950s atlases, that sort of thing. But anyways, I'll just stick with Bell, MT. And I'm, uh, see how the, the letter spacing is reasonable here? But in our reference, we have kind of a odd, wonky, actually kind of inconsistent kerning in that letter spacing, but um, there's no option for inconsistent kerning, but there is an option for letter spacing. So in the formatting for this text, I'm gonna, instead of 0%, I'm gonna 
increase this by 50% of its default letter spacing. Let's see how that looks. And I like it. Okay, we're making good progress. Um, we'll go back to our scale bar. All right, check it out. We've got a reasonable structure in place now, comparable to our reference material. So this is how to use the scale bar um, format menu to choose the options and the properties associated with your scale. Bar. It's so flexible, um, but it doesn't quite look exactly the same. I mean, come on, I'm not crazy. I understand this doesn't look exactly the same. So this is setting up the structure using these options. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to uh, play with actual styles and make this look printed and wavy and imperfect and hand tinted. Can you believe that? Do you believe that we're capable of doing that? Fully in ArcGIS Pro, no sampled textures from the outside, nothing. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna darn well give it a try. Okay, stick with me. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for part two. Goodbye.